It's day two of Women's Health Week and this morning we'll be discussing polycystic ovaries. In the UK it's estimated that between 5 and 10 in every 100 women may have PCOS. But how much do we know about this condition, its causes and its treatments? Find out more in today's Women's AM. Bismillah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. My dear sisters, and welcome to Women's AM on this sunny morning. We're live for the next hour to share with you the news stories that have caught our eye, as well as interesting discussions, foodie advice, and much more. In today's show, we'll share with you some news stories that caught our attention in our first segment, News Bites, and in our next segment, it's the second installment in our Women's Health series, where we'll be d discussing polycystic ovaries. And we'll be ending with our third segment, where we'll be discussing discussing superfoods for women. I'm your host, Hassana, and today we have our Women's AM regulars, Liz and Nazia. Assalamu alaikum, sisters. Well, it's great to see you, sisters, alhamdulillah. And joining us later on, we have chair and trustee of Verity, Rachel Hawkes. So, sisters, it's Easter holidays, of course, and, you know, I was kind of, uh, I went to a shopping centre the other day, and all I could see is all the kids are there, and I thought, <laughs> you know, I'm sure the mums out there are wondering, what can we do with our children? So I wanted to ask you, sisters, what are some kind of low cost or free uh, fun things for kids to do during the holidays. Uh, Liz, let's let's come to you first, inshallah. Well, I think we've been so blessed um, this Easter holidays because we've had quite a few nice sunny days. It started mm, off absolutely. a bit grey, but we've, you know, had some opportunities to get out in the sun. Um, and I think, um, you know, a great thing, you know, go for a picnic with the kids. You know, you can invite as many people as you want. Everybody brings a dish, you know, really keeps the cost down. They can kick, kids can kick a ball round. You know, they love it. I think that's a really fantastic uh, way to spend an afternoon. And obviously, Obviously, depending on the age of, of your kids, me and my daughter just love spending an afternoon feeding the ducks. <laughs> that does sound really, really lovely, and it kind of reminds me of my childhood days as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. This is the nausea. Actually, my son last weekend, he went on a camping trip ah. with his father. So that was quite good, actually, because, you know, there are lots of skills that they can learn while they're out there. And it's actually a good opportunity to sort of... Um, they actually went with a group of people as well, so it was really, really good. And it's amazing the kind of things that they, they did. You know, they, um, there's so many kind of camps as well available and they provide a lot of activities for them to do. So I think that's really, really one really that I would recommend. Well, it, is, it? it is, it is, yeah. it is. And in a world where, you know, the, the lives revolve around Xbox or, yeah. you know, computer games and things like that, to actually go back to doing the kind of old, you know, the kind of really life skills that you yeah. can get from that. I think yeah. it's very, I think it's very good for children you know, to do that. An activity which I think is actually really, really good for kids. I mean, it might sound a little bit strange, but it's gardening. I think that's really, yeah. really nice. You yeah. know, if each child has their own kind of pot that they need to look after um, and you're planting things with them and you watch <laughs> the progress of the plant as it grows. I think that's yeah, a really yeah. nice family activity as well. I mean, mm -hmm. I can't say I'm very good at gardening. Everything I grow <laughs> seems to just kind of wilt away after a few days. But it's definitely one to try. And alhamdulillah, you know, seeds are available quite cheaply. And you yeah, can just even yeah. use, you know, um, you know, general things that you find around the house to plant it in. So alhamdulillah, really a good way to, to have some fun with the kids. So great ideas there, this is alhamdulillah. Well, let's go to our first segment of the show now. Of course, it's News Bites. Discuss what's been happening around the world and of course we'd love for you to join in our discussion on the stories we're talking about call in live to the show the number is on your screens inshallah so sisters we've got some really interesting stories today sister Nazia talk us through your story inshallah okay so my article is taken from the telegraph um, bad behavior in students is glossed over to maintain schools reputation says study um, so this is based upon um, research that's been done over the last 10 years uh, studies revealed that um, that there's a level of in uh, indiscipline in schools is is the level of it is really underestimated seriously underestimated and what they're finding is that under the pressure of Ofsted's and inspections and so on that what the problem is that they can't show that there's high levels of uh, expulsions and therefore they need to kind of gloss mm -hmm. over the reality of the situation and there is 
a huge problem in terms of discipline within the schools. Um, we know it's spiralling out of control. There's a there's a lack of respect um, for certainly for people in authority. I mean, we see that across the board. It's not just with parents, but with teachers and even the police and so on. We see a lot of problems in society, and naturally, this has brought up the whole debate: whose responsibility is it? Is it the parents? Is it the school? Um, schools would argue that this is the parents' responsibility. Uh, the parents are blaming the schools. To a degree, the way I look at it, the responsibility is there on both sides, more with one. If we were to look at the schools, you have to consider the fact that you know the school has to provide a robust system in terms of disciplining the children, because while the children are in, under their supervision, in their care, they are in loci parentis with them. So they're taking charge of that responsibility. They're, they're looking after those kids. So the discipline has to be there. In terms of the uh, the key responsibility, yes, that's with the parents. We know that, even Islamically, you know, Allah SWT has said in, um, in Surah Tareem, all you who believe, save yourselves and your families from the fire whose fuel is men and stones. When we look at it specifically in terms of bringing up children, we have to, as parents, we have to instill the correct kind of manners and etiquette so that these children end up behaving in the way that is expected of them to behave and that is in an appropriate manner and certainly when it comes to teachers there has to be that respect there in Islam you know we know our first teachers the Prophet so there's this whole Islam, issue Islam. in terms of ne learning seeking knowledge these are huge important aspects that a I child mean, needs to understand you're absolutely right I remember when I used to work in education I used yeah. to teach in a secondary school and I, I did work in both the state sector and the private mm -hmm. sector so I kind of have a, a general understanding of how discipline works in both environments and I have to say I was appalled when I first mm -hmm. went into teaching at some of the behavior that the, the, the children were demonstrating I was really taken aback I mean I was teaching at secondary level and and the kids are very very disrespectful at times mm -hmm. um, and uh, to the point where I could understand why members of staff were kind of leaving the profession to seek mm -hmm. um, careers in other fields and actually statistics show that generally teachers tend to leave teaching within the first five years because yeah. wow. they've literally just had enough they can't deal with the with with the yeah. issues so I think it I, is definitely an issue that I, we're facing it is a, a I mean, don't you think, though, it's, it's, uh, sometimes it's counterproductive to always, it's almost like this blame, um, blame culture mm. that we have. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the schools are blaming the parents and the parents are blaming the schools, when actually what you need to do is pr uh, uh, present a united front, almost. Uh, uh, you know, you need to make sure that you're, you're um, both presenting discipline in, in the same way, you're both mm -hmm. consistent in the, the standards and but the how, levels that it's being presented. But how do you set that up when a child is sitting there thinking, this is according to the society that tells you you can do what you want to do speak to whoever you want ultimately yeah. this is what ends up happening the, the, the kind of language that young people say I want to do what I want to do yeah. and Absolutely. they will do it and if that means disrespecting the teacher they will do that well a really so. interesting article there Jazakallah for sharing that with us Sister Nazia Sister Liz you've got a, another interesting one a really heartbreaking one actually it is very sad and again it's a kind of school based um, article it's from the Metro and um, the headline reads they walk around like ghosts teachers warning of children at school 10 hours a day. Ten hours a day. I mean, the thought of being at work ten hours a day, I'm sure, would fill most adults with dread. So Absolutely. the idea of children, some as young as four, uh, you know, doing ten-hour days is—it really is heartbreaking. But when you kind of dig a little bit deeper into the story, it, it gets even sadder when you see that actually these are coming from uh, these children coming from families where the parents are working full time or you know, single-parent families just trying to basically keep their head above water financially. Um, there's a teacher in Kent that comments that most of our parents commute from Kent into London which is you know going to add mm. you know hours onto your day isn't it so you know this this is where the long hours are coming from and some of these children are having breakfast lunch and dinner at school uh, you know it just completely you know, strips away any of their kind of family time and and the value of, of children being at home with I the mean, family. I mean Sister Nazi just tying in your story earlier do you do you think that this is partly the reason why we're seeing these behavioral issues because the kids are kind of spending so much time away from their parents that perhaps that discipline and that disciplinary figure isn't really present um, in their lives. Well, you know, this is, this is the natural result, isn't it? Because when you don't have clear boundaries being set down, how are you supposed to set those boundaries if you as a parent are not there for your child, um, if they're gone for long periods of time? And then you also have the dilemma where the schools themselves, um, they're, t 
they're teaching a class maybe of up to 30, 30 children mm -hmm. to try and bring mm -hmm. some kind of order there and again when the boundaries are not clearly defined and especially where the child is not given the signal who should be um, I mean really from the point of view the parents should be doing that but as we're seeing the system where more and more parents are being encouraged to go out into work and in some cases forced is, they have no, yeah, no they don't have a choice to go out there to exactly. work. so unfortunately they're so, in a very difficult yeah, situation as well the kids are the ones who pay the price at the end of it and you see the whole thing collapse absolutely and you know the thing is as well these parents that as you said they are forced into work they are forced mm. into spending these long periods of time away from their children which you know you don't really no parent really wants to be away from their children for that mm. amount of time then when they do see the children sometimes there's the the temptation to kind of spoil them mm. maybe not be as strict, strict or as disciplined absolutely. as you should be this is the guilt syndrome it, the guilt it? syndrome yeah. absolutely and so this is where we see a kind of yeah. a negative cycle then in yeah. terms of behavior and, and upbringing mm. Mm. I think I think that's definitely the case and, and what we're also finding is that a lot of kids as you mentioned before you know perhaps they're not taking the discipline at school very seriously because yeah. you know there's such a kind of a wide range of discipline mm -hmm. strategies yeah. one teacher might be quite kind of um, you know lenient mm. with the children whereas another teacher might be quite strict yeah. and because yeah. you don't have that kind of uniformity in terms of and discipline yeah. um, the, the children are kind of you know able mm -hmm. to kind of differentiate oh this teacher's gonna let me off I'll go to that teacher um, yeah. and so you will see these kind of um, these issues that we're talking about but coming back to what you were saying Liz about the long hours that they're spending there I find it absolutely you know it's just heartbreaking because mm. you can imagine the kids you know I mean you get tired after spending an hour doing certain tasks and having absolutely. to spend 10 hours at school you know gosh I'm, I'm just uh, absolutely shocked by it that it's really. very sad and I think the last comment in this article is actually very telling um, it says the Department for Education has insisted that the um, uh, longer nursery opening hours which we, we know are going to be taking children from two and more mm. are going to be encouraged to do that uh, their statement on this says that it will have a real and lasting impact on children's lives. Lasting impact? Uh, what kind of impact exactly, do they mean? That's a question. Absolutely, well, a yeah. question because if based on this article that I just did, if they don't respect them, then obviously in terms of the kind of people that they become, the kind of discipline that's now disappearing from the schools, yeah. I would have serious concerns into what kind of child your child is growing up into, you know, what kind of adult they will become. Absolutely. And I think also so. just from the teacher's perspective, you know, ha having worked in that industry, it's a very, very tough kind of field to work in. And you're constantly pushed, you know, you've got marking to do, you've got to look mm. after the kids, and then, then you've got our after school clubs and, and there's, there's lots of responsibilities there. So if we're putting so much stress on the teacher, yeah. is it any wonder that we're mm. seeing these kind of these gaps there and yeah. uh, you know it does make me think that more support needs to be given um, to the schools but also to the parents to help them Absolutely. when they're mm -hmm. facing difficulty you know in terms of either whether whether it's picking up their children or dropping them off or just in terms of of, of giving them you know maybe workshops on, on on discipline and things like that I think all of this needs to be um, discussed but alhamdulillah a really really interesting selection of stories there definitely relevant uh, as we're in the school holiday so jazakallah khair sisters for that alhamdulillah well, here's a quick reminder before we go to our break of this week's competition. This week on Women's AM, we are holding an exciting competition for you sisters out there. Up for Grabs is a year's subscription for a sisters magazine. To be in with a chance to win this fabulous goodie, all you have to do is answer the following question. Which is the shortest surah in the Quran? A. Surah al kawtar B. Surah Tawbah C. Surah Al-Fatiha D. Surah Al-Nas to enter, email your answer A, B, C or D to womensam at islamchannel.tv along with your name and address and what you most like about Women's AM. The deadline for the entry is Friday the 18th of April 2014 at 4pm. All applicants need to be over 18 and residing in the UK. Please note only one entry per person per household. A winner will be randomly selected from all correct entries, so get entering. Well, a really great competition there, uh, but we're off to a quick break now. Stay tuned after the break. We'll be back with our main segment, Hair Views, where we'll be discussing polycystic ovaries. Stay where we are, where you are. We'll see you in just a few minutes. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.